Carpenter Woodworks and following on from last week's tool setup this week we're going to be looking at setting up a sharpening kit okay so as you can see there are various items of sharpening kit there's quite a selection starting off with oil stones then you've got a leather strop diamond plates this piece of kit is also a leather strop it also gives you dimensions for setting your honing gauge which is that little item which I'll show you how to use in a moment and then you go on to the more expensive of the range which is the water stones Japanese water stones so today we don't want to be going for the more expensive range of kit so we're going to be looking at the low starter end the easy part will be more towards your oil stones and to your diamond plates so to start with oil stones which are these these can be picked up fairly reasonably, fairly cheap. The only thing I would say is if you're gonna buy an oil stone, if you buy a second hand one, check that the whole surface is flat. If it's not flat, you're not gonna get a good sharp and you're gonna wind up putting a curvature in your blade, which is not a good thing. So realistically, either buy a new oil stone, they're quite cheap, they're not expensive. Buy a nice little box to keep it in. Again, very cheap and you would have a good double-sided oil stone that gives you a coarse side and it also gives you a soft fine side to sharpen on just for honing up putting the edge back on so that's your oil stone the use with the oil stone a lot of people tend to use engine oils engine oils I find are a little bit too thick they hold the blades off of the stone and the sharpening isn't as quick or as clean so I tend to use a small drop of three-in-one oil followed up and thinned out with some WD-40 and that gives you a nice even fluid that will cut clean and it keeps your stone clean as well. So this is the oil stone and the fluids for the oil stone. This one is the diamond lapping stone and again got two grades on there depending on what obviously what stone you or what plate you buy you this one's actually got 300 and a thousand grit. You can also although they're very expensive get a holder for the diamond plate and that one's by trend and that grips the plate stops it from moving good little tool now some people have used in the past window cleaner fluid for the diamond plates i would strongly recommend against it a lot of people say oh it's the same thing i would recommend against it purely because after using it for a while it leaves plate with a rust film so i wouldn't use that i'd be inclined to spend that extra couple of quid go and buy the proper fluid the lapping fluid which has a form of oil in it that will keep the stone protected it won't rust okay so that's your diamond plate that's another form of sharpening and then we're going to move on to the next thing which takes the curl off the back of the sharpen which i'll explain more when we actually do the sharpening video and for that you need a leather a leather strop is you could use an old piece of leather belt you can use a, a section of leather that you've cut out of something glued to a piece of mdf using the fuzzy side up that gives you a nice stropping plate for taking any curls or burrs off your sharpening. When using the leather strop you need a stropping compound. You can buy these stropping compounds in little blocks they're only about five pound each and that will give you the form of cutting and all you do is you just rub that on a couple of times over your leather and then when you're running your blade across the back of it or stropping your blade up that is the cutting compound. The thing we need next is a guide, a little cheap guide, they're only about £10, but they are really good, they will keep the angle. And the way they work is when you take your blade out of your plane or whether you take your chisel and you remove, let's just remove that blade, you've got your blade to get that angle for the for the for the actual sharpening setting it into the gauge like that and tightening it in so it sits tight in the gauge that will give you your angle now to set the correct angle if you look on the side of the gauge 
it does give you some dimensions. Now, the way those dimensions work, it's set out for chisel or plane blade. Now, this one obviously is a plane blade, as you can see, and the distance for the plane blade to get the correct angles on this one to give you a 30 degree angle, you need to set 38 mil and for 25 degrees, 50 mil. So you would set the distance of that from the edge of the blade to the edge of the guide. So if that's 50 millimeter, you would set that 50 millimeter and that will give you when it touches the actual oil stone, as you can see, and you're running it along the oil stone, that will give you the correct angle of 25 degrees. You may ask why there is a difference in dimensions between chisel and a plane blade. The reason being is the plane blade sits in the top of the gauge there, and the chisel will sit lower down in this bottom groove here. So therefore the dimensions are altered slightly but that will give you the 25 and the 30 degrees. Again, there's other things that you can buy, like this plate. It's a little bit more expensive, but this plate is actually quite good. It allows you to set your honing gauge by literally setting it up against the edge of the plate. So that makes it a lot easier to actually set rather than trying to set it with a steel rule. You can actually make these yourself literally with a, a piece of MDF and a couple of little stops, you can set up and make a similar sort of thing, but that will give you 30 degrees. And again, that one with that slid down, as you can see, will give you a 25 degrees. Now these plates are quite expensive, but the beauty of this one is, it also gives you your stropping plate and it also allows you a space to set in your diamond plate. Alternatively, if you're using an oil stone, you can set your oil stone. It'll hold it still just while you're working. That is a good, a good plate. That is a good plate, but very expensive and not really necessary to start with. So I've shown you a good selection of sharpening equipment that's available from your oil stones, your diamond plates, your lapping stones, your strops, and also Japanese water stones. Starting at the top end, the most expensive end, you've got your Japanese water stones, and they can be anything up to 60, 80 pound per stone, if not more. Not really economic when you're starting out. Going further down, a basic sharpening setup. A lot of people will start to sharpen using wet and dry papers, but you will find using wet and dry papers that over a period of time, that your paper's gonna wear, and the amount of expense that you're gonna be putting into wet and dry paper to sharpen, is going to be far outweighing the cost of buying a basic oil stone. I favour oil stones and diamond stones purely on price and the way they sharpen. Their longevity, they are going to last a long while. Coming down to a basic starter kit, I would, for yourselves, if you're just starting, do away with your diamond plates. Let's just say diamond plates and holders, they can go. So we've narrowed those down, they're out of the equation, which would leave us with basically a oil stone, drop a three in one oil, and a little can of WD-40. That is all you're gonna need. To take the wire off the back of the cut, once you've actually sharpened the, the chisel or the plain bait, a piece of leather. Now, like I said before, you can use a bit of leather belt. Just chop an old, an old belt down, Put it onto a bit of MDF as long as it's stuck down well enough so it don't move that's going to do you. We've talked about sharpening materials today like the actual stones that we're going to need. In the next video what I'm going to do is show you just very quickly how to sharpen a plain blade and a chisel. If you've enjoyed this video don't forget like and subscribe, leave a comment, let us know whether you've tried anything yourself. We look forward to seeing you again, thanks for watching, we'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.